Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we can gather in your name, that we can gather around your word. We can gather together and worship your Son in the presence and the anointing of your Holy Spirit. We just pray for your blessing upon everyone that is listening near and far, Lord, that they'd be blessed and touched through your word and through the worship. Lord, we just pray that you would be our teacher, that you would open up your word so that we may understand a little bit more this day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, it's great to see everybody here. And uh, it's always wonderful to be at church. I always look forward to church very much. I had church twice on Friday night. And two different churches in Pakistan. I preached in the two churches in Pakistan. But Pakistan is a different country. And we did it through the internet. And we had Skype. So people could listen to the preaching. And I didn't have to get on an aeroplane and fly there. And I was able to do that directly from here. Today, we are talking in front of people in Australia. We're talking to people in Pakistan. We're talking to people in the United Arab Emirates. Dubai? Or Middle East. We're talking to people in America. We're talking, we're talking in front of people all over the world. See, something is happening in God's kingdom. God is moving in people's hearts and lives all over the world. I haven't seen this before. I came to the Lord more than 20 years ago. And I, I, I shared last week, unless God touches you, you cannot be saved. But when He touches you, your life changes. You become a different person. Because it is Him that has to touch you. Now, if He doesn't touch you, don't become a Christian. Because if you become a Christian because of your friends, <laughs> or for other reasons, you become a Christian for the wrong reason. <laughs> you only become a Christian because He touches your heart. And He changes you from the inside out. And so, from here to get from the inside of me to the outside takes a long time. Because I am much bigger than you. <laughs> but he starts on your heart. And he touches you. Now I shared this message with the churches in Pakistan on Friday night. And some people got saved. There were seven, seven people got saved on the internet. Isn't that fantastic? And that's what God is doing from our little church here in China. He's reaching out to the world. And while I was sharing the message, I said, there is a woman that has a problem here in her throat. And I asked her to come forward and the pastor's wife prayed for her. And that woman was not a Christian. 
She got a healing from God. And became a Christian. There and then on the internet. Isn't that amazing? So here we are, God is moving in the world. He's using young people like you to touch the nation of China. And other people listening in other countries is using you to touch people in your country. We are really blessed. We live in a time where we have this type of technology and we can reach around the world. Now, Moses didn't have this type of technology. <laughs> Moses could listen to God, <laughs> but he did not have his mobile phone to take a, send a text message. <laughs> He did not have the mobile phone to take a photo. It had to be by the power of the word. I think maybe the mobile phone today is stopping people from communicating. And you might say, oh no, the phone is for communication. And I say, no, I think it is to stop you from really communicating. That's why it's so important for us to come to church because we can communicate. And I like to talk to people. But today a young man said, Can I take a photo of you? And I said, After church, because I was getting ready. And I, I don't like saying that I don't like saying that to people. But before church, it's very difficult. Just imagine Moses. He is chosen by God. He is going to become the leader of the nation. And the nation of Israel was a whole lot of people, more than two million men. And he is the leader. That means he is a much bigger leader than you or me. And he is chosen by he is chosen by God to talk to Pharaoh. Now Pharaoh was the king of Egypt. A very important man. He had soldiers. He had everything. He just spoke and they had to do what he, he said. And here's Moses. He has been looking after sheep in the desert for 40 years. And for 40 years, he looks like a shepherd. He doesn't look like a king. And God has said to him, I want you to go and talk to Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh, I mean Moses, his knees are knocking together. His heart is pumping. And when he goes to speak, he goes, ah, 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 ah. I don't know how to speak. I am frightened. And he says to God, What will I say? And God says, Tell Pharaoh who I am. And Moses says, Who, are, who can I say you are? And he says, I am that I am. Now, I, I am that I am. You can read that in the book of Exodus. Open your Bibles now to Exodus chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 14. Now, the, the whole thing is that Moses is frightened to, to speak to Pharaoh. 
See, Pharaoh is a king. And the king has subjects. If the king has no subjects, subjects is people. If the king has no people, he is not a king. If the people do not have a king, they are not a kingdom. Now I say to people who contact me and say, Oh, I want to become a pastor. I say, Well, that is a good thing. But tell me about your sheep. Do you have sheep? And they say, no, I don't. I want to become a pastor to get some sheep. And I said, well, you're not a pastor. You might be a bit of pastry, but you are not a pastor. <laughs> a pastor is a person who has sheep. If you are desiring to become a pastor, that is a good thing. But don't try to become a pastor before you get some sheep. Because you're really not a pastor. So a king has to have people. And the people have to have a king. And that gives the king some power. And the people want the king to have that power to control the nation. So can we read that scripture in Exodus? When Moses is saying, who shall I say has sent me? Because you need to understand, Moses looks like a shepherd. He didn't look like a king. He did not look like a leader. But God had chosen him. And so if the Pharaoh looks at him, he said, well, you don't look like me. And Pharaoh didn't have, I mean, Moses didn't have much confidence. Can someone turn off that phone? It's annoying. Turn it off. If you don't have confidence, the way you think will come through. The way, if you don't have confidence in here, people will understand you don't have confidence. If, if, you, are, if you are frightened of being a teacher, your students will know. When you are confident, your students will be confident in you too. Now, Moses knew he was not confident. And God had chosen him to lead a whole nation of two million people. I think all of us would have been a bit frightened. Especially if we have to go to the king. But God says to him, read it now, please, that, that scripture. Chapter 3, verse 13. Verse 14. I am that I am. I thought that was an unusual thing to say. Why did God say, Tell Pharaoh, I am that I am? Because, does that sound like a person's name to you? So if you ask me my name and I say, I am that I am, oh. what would you think? Oh. 
you would think I was crazy. But God is not crazy. God has a purpose in His name. And, and we need to look at His name to see what it means. There was a French writer in, in 1650 who said, who said, I think, therefore I am. And his name was René Descartes. Descartes. And he said, I think, therefore I am. But he made a mistake. He did not read the Bible correctly. Because the Bible says, I am that I am is God's name. And when he said, I think, therefore I am, he is making himself his own God. Instead of trusting in the God of all creation. See, before I became a Christian, I would say, I am my own God. I will make my own decisions. It's my money. It's my life. I am in charge of my destiny. And I will do this, and I will do that. But I found out that lots of times I had lots of heartache and disappointment. <laughs> because I was trying to, trying to do everything in my strength. I did not know there was a stronger power than me. So no matter how hard I tried, in some things I could not win. I would fail. And we all do that. Moses was the leader. But he couldn't speak properly. His speech was his speech was broken. He didn't have the confidence. And he needed something to say to Pharaoh so Pharaoh would listen. But Pharaoh was very hard in his heart. He didn't want to listen. So then, then God brings a plague, brings frogs, brings disaster upon the nation of Egypt. See, because Moses could not do that. But Moses could tell Pharaoh this was going to happen. But he could not do it himself. He didn't have that power. He couldn't change the, red, the river to blood. He was just a man. But see, I am that I am could do that. I have thought about his name for years and years and years. And I always thought, isn't that a funny name? And then someone told me about Napoleon. Napoleon was the emperor of France. And one day he is riding on his horse. And he comes down to look at the soldiers. Napoleon. Napoleon is the emperor, he is all powerful. But somebody did not tell the horse. 
<laughs> Napoleon is sitting on the horse. <laughs> and he let go of the reins, you know, to hold the horse. He let go of it. <laughs> and nobody told the horse that Napoleon had all the power. And so the horse starts to run. And Napoleon is holding on to his saddle. Because he knows he can die. And the horse is running down past all the soldiers. And one of the soldiers, the lowest rank soldier, soldier lowest rank, private soldier. He has no stripes, he has nothing. He runs out and he grabs the horse. And the horse stopped. And Napoleon looked at him and said, Thank you, Captain. Now he was a private. But Napoleon said, Thank you, Captain. And the man said, Quickly. In whose, in which regiment am I a captain? And Napoleon said, you are in my private guard. You are my soldier to protect me. Now everybody there were, was amazed. This ordinary soldier stopped the horse. Napoleon said, thank you, Captain. Somebody else spoke to the soldier and the soldier said, ah, I am a captain now. And this other person said, who said you were a captain? He said, the emperor. The emperor made him a captain. See, when God chose Moses, he made him the leader. Even if he didn't have a heart to speak in public. Even if he was afraid to tell Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. God chose him. And then God even makes it more difficult. Because he says to tell him, I am that I am, has sent you. <coughs> I am is the name of God. God exists inside time, outside of time. In the universe, outside of the universe. She's lost me, so translate. God is everywhere. If God is your God, He's a God inside of you. And in the smallest particle of your body, He is I am. If you're not a Christian, He's still in the smallest part of you, as I am. But you are not anything if you are not a Christian. See, I can say, I am a Christian. I can never say, I am God. I am a Christian. But I can only say I am a Christian because he said so. So all of you who are Christians, I am the God of all creations, says you are. Jesus says in the book of John, and we're not going to be able to read them all, 
But you can read one, that is John chapter 8, verse 58. Jesus is questioned about who he is. And Jesus says, John 8, 58. Are we ready to read that? E He says, Before Abraham, I am. That's not bad English. Because some people will say, Before Abraham, I was. Jesus did not make the mistake. He was saying, I am. It means I'm God. So when he is saying, I am, he is identifying that he was before Abraham. Now he says, he goes on and he says, Another seven times, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. He says, I am the door of the sheep, so the sheep can come in. He says, I am the good shepherd. He says, I am the resurrection of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. He says eight times, I am. But I'm still asking the question in my mind. Why didn't God have some other fancy name? Other than I am that I am. Because it has taken me oh, 25 years to work out why he said I am that I am. Because I am that I am is telling me I have needs in my life. And you have needs in your life. I need this, I need that, I need this. See, when I am poor, God is my provision. When I am sick, God is my healer. So when I say, I am sick, he says, that's okay, I am the healer. If I feel depressed, he says, that's okay, I am your redeemer. Why does he say, I am that I am? Because when every one of us says, I am weak. He can say, I am your strength. When you say, I can't do this, he says, well, I can do this. I am that I am is all powerful. This small I am is not so powerful. But you, you can know his power by becoming a son of God. See, when we can say son or daughter, I am a son of God. I am filled with his spirit. I, I will preach the gospel to anyone who will listen. 
He has given me a new heart, a soft heart, but on that heart, he has written the word of God. He's given me a new spirit, because my old spirit didn't know his voice. He's also given us the Holy Spirit to communicate with our spirit in our heart where the word of God is written on our heart so we understand the things of God. But he also gives us the mind of Jesus to look at the world the way Jesus looked at the world. It's an amazing miracle because God comes to live inside of you. I am that I am lives in your heart. And we live in Him. That means we have become one with God. And when we become one with God, we have a connection. So if I take this phone and I think that look at this phone, I say, I can communicate with God without the phone. Because I am that I am lives in you. And you live in him. He wants to talk to you. He wants to communicate with you on all of your needs. So if you say, I have a need, you say to God, I am that I am, that is. Can you help me? I need your help. Then he comes and he changes us. And we become more like him. God said, I am that I am. So we can be us. When I wasn't a Christian, I didn't know who I was. I was trying to be something that was in my, in my mind, but it really wasn't me. And I've been walking around thinking to myself, wow, I am that I am has changed me. So that I can be me. And that's the miracle all of us have. So if you're not a Christian and you're here, now you can become a Christian. Now you can accept Jesus Christ and know the power that comes from I am. It's not talking about you just thinking about you. Because when you're growing up, you are thinking about you, 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 you. Me, 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 me. Yes. Yes. You agree with me? Yes, friend. You were thinking, me, 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 me. <laughs> what about me? When we, we start to believe in Jesus, our thinking changes. And it becomes all about Him. When you're focused on Him, the me, that's you and me, our life will get better. Because our focus is on Him. And then we can say, I know why I'm here. I know why I'm in China. Because I am say go. Why, why are you here today? Because I am sent you here. 
You did not come. You did not come by accident today. You did not come by accident. You did not come by accident. There was a purpose for you to be here. To know that there is somebody bigger than you. And his name is I am that I am. Pharaoh, his kingdom, his army could not stop Moses. But what God has chosen is going to happen.